Days after becoming the first nation to land a craft near the moon's largely unexplored South Pole, India is all set to achieve another space exploration milestone. The Aditya L-1 is the first Indian space mission to study the sun. Here's more on the mission and the Indian space program. The spacecraft will be placed in an orbit around the Lagrange, point one of the Sun-Earth system, about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth, where the gravitational effects of both bodies cancel each other out. That parking lot in space allows objects to stay put because of balancing gravitational forces. The Aditya L1 will have a continuous clear view of the Sun. As per the Indian Space Agency ISRO, the mission will help observe solar activities and effects on space weather in real time. The spacecraft will be carrying seven payloads to observe the sun's outermost layers, known as the photosphere and chromosphere, including by using electromagnetic and particle field detectors. Among several objectives, it will study the drivers for space weather, including a better understanding of the dynamics of solar wind. While NASA and the European Space Agency have previously placed orbiters to study the sun, it will be the first such mission for India Let's now talk about India's space program. The unmanned Chandrayaan-3, meaning mooncraft in Sanskrit, touched down on the lunar surface on August 23rd. It marked the latest milestone in India's ambitious space program, sparking celebrations across the world's largest democracy. Remember, only four nations have landed successfully on the moon. That is India, Russia, the United States, and China. India's space program has grown considerably in size and momentum since the nation first sent a probe to orbit the moon in 2008. In 2014, India became the first Asian nation to put a craft into orbit around Mars. The country is slated to launch a three-day crewed mission into the Earth's orbit by next year. There are plans for a joint mission with Japan to send another probe to the moon by the, 20, by the year 2025. India is also aiming for an orbital mission to Venus within the next two years. Well, this is live in Sri Harikota. We are counting just less than 15 minutes to go to the launch of Aditya L1 mission to the sun. And as you can see, the scientists there are readying themselves to get closer to the sun. This is a, not a first for India, but uh, it's an observation that will be keenly watched by the world now that Aditya L1 will travel and orbit the sun for approximately 100 days. It will stay in space for five years, just observing the sun and the sun rays. All right, let's talk about this mission. And joining us now is Arup Dasgupta, former Deputy Director of ISRO from Ahmedabad. Arup, thank you very much for making time for us and welcome to We on Wild is One. Thank you very much, Eric, for uh, this opportunity. Probably we can talk about this mission. Uh, what does this mission mean for you? Well, as you know, uh, the sun is also a star and in the sun is one of the nearest stars, so to speak. So if you want to study about uh, about stars, then uh, studying the sun is perhaps a very good opportunity. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the sun is what gives us life. If, if su the sun wasn't there, there would be no us. Mm -hmm. And therefore it makes it imperative that we understand what the sun is doing. What is it all about? We know a lot about it, uh, of course. Over the years, we have uh, got in a lot of information. But nevertheless, there are many issues which we have not quite fully understood. And that's uh, what uh, Aditya L1 is going to do. It's going to add to the amount of knowledge that has already been collected by many countries, many space probes and so forth. And uh, our intention is essentially to also look at another aspect which we call as the space weather. Mm. Now, you know, uh, we are all inside what is called the solar heliosphere. That means uh, the, the influence of the sun in terms of particles which are coming out of it as solar wind. 
Now this, uh, particularly when the sun gets very active and is going to be very active from 2025 to 2028, because if there's 11 year cycle of the solar uh, act, uh, maxima. Right. And during this time, we're going to have a lot of uh, particles and corona and thing coming out from the sun. And these actually he hurt uh, our communications. It hurts our satellites. Many satellites have uh, been incapacitated uh, and even uh, burnt up because of these kind of solar uh, activities. So therefore, we need to understand what is this solar, uh, you know, the, so the, the space weather out there mm -hmm. so that we can be careful with our satellites because we are depending on satellites more and more for right. communication, for Earth observations and so forth. Eric, Arup, why is it important for India, actually not just for India, but for the world to observe and to experiment these stars? You are talking about the sun, we're not talking about uh, the moon. Why is it important for space explorers to study these two biggest stars? As I, as I explained to you, the, the sun is what gives us life and uh, we need to understand about the sun uh, and various aspects of, of its activities. Uh, we, 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 do, we do know a lot about it, but uh, then we need to know more, particularly because we are now going out into space. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, we, we are talking about putting men on the moon. We are talking about putting uh, a human habitat on the moon. We are talking about using the moon as a base for exploring uh, other planets. Now, the moon, as you know, has no protective atmosphere, no protective magnetic field, unlike the Earth, which has that. So therefore, the moon is very much affected by many of these uh, solar radiations and things like that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, if we are going to explore space, if we, if we are going to explore the planets, then we need to understand more and more about the sun and about the space weather, which is affected by the solar heliosphere, which, as I have said, encompasses the entire planetary system. Eric? All right, I've been talking to Dr. Arup, but before I let you go, I just want uh, a quick comment from you, because uh, scientists say that uh, solar physics now demands multi-wavelength astronomy. It will be important how data from various instruments on a DTA L1 are effectively combined and put to use to make sense of a solar event. What's your comment on that, briefly? Absolutely. The more data you have, the better are your analysis and the better are your results. Okay. I've been talking to Dr. Arup. Thank you very much for all your insights and for talking to us, Dr. Arup. Das Gupta is a former deputy director of ISRO and he is live from Ahmedabad, India. Dr. Arup, thank you. Thank you. You are watching We On Wild as One. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.